after last night's dominating victory over Regis Progray, Devin Haney had a whole lot to say about Javante Davis. And today, Coach Calvin Ford, he came back and he had a whole lot to say about Devin Haney. I'm going to let y'all hear what both sides had to say about each other. I'm going to give y'all my take on the situation. But before we do that, make sure that you hit my like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subbed to the channel. Say, man, let me start off this video by giving Devin Haney his flowers. Devin went out there and he put on a perfect performance. You know, the only thing that he could have done better is finished off the fight and stop Regis, right? But I told everybody I was going to get on Devin Haney helmet if he didn't get the knockout. All of the stuff that his daddy was talking, all of the stuff that Devin was talking Every time somebody else have a fight, Devin be the first one to get on Twitter and pop his shit. But I ain't going to do that because I'm a real boxing fan. I'm not no troll. You know, I don't get on here just to troll fighters and all of that. And I keep it a buck a thousand percent of the time. So I'm going to give Devin his props because he went out there and he put on the dominating performance. And I'm a boxing fan that believe you don't have to get the knockout all the time, you know. And in that situation, like I said, he would have had an A-plus performance if he had got the knockout. But I gave him an A. Devin Haney controlled the fight from start to finish. I mean, he dropped Regis. We hadn't seen Devin drop nobody in four or five years. And he went out there and, like I said, he just put on a master class performance. Now... I did pick Devin Haney to beat Regis Progray. And when I broke down the fight, I said one of the things that I know about Regis Progray is his defense is not that good. And he needs to be in his range to be able to land his punches. He has short arms and he has to be inside to be able to land punches. And I said that, you know, I think that Devin is going to use his jab, move a lot, outbox him on the outside. But I also thought during the second half of the fight, Regis would be able to close the distance and make the fight closer. But Regis was never able to get in his range. His feet were way too slow to cut off the ring. He was never able to slow Devin Haney down and close the distance. And Regis showed that he's only able to fight in one style. You know, that boxing shit wasn't working for Regis. Not trying to box somebody like Devin Haney, but on Devin Haney's end, Devin Haney did sit down on his shots a little bit more. And against the southpaw, like Regis Progray is, Devin had that straight right hand pumping all night and he was landing in that wheel. And Devin didn't get tired at all. Devin was able to sustain the movement that he likes to use from round one to 12. Usually, we see Devin slow down against pressure fighters, you know? He'll look great in the first half of the fight, and then during the back end, he'll start slowing down, and that's what gives you a chance to land big shots on Devin. But he ain't do that at 140, you know? He wasn't even tired. Now, like I said, I do believe that Regis, looking at the fight, was tailor-made for Devin Haney style, but you still can't take nothing away from Devin because he went out there, put on a great performance, and he whooped Regis like Regis ain't never been whooped before. And he backed up and did everything that he promised and said he was going to do, but get the knockout. You know what I'm saying? He did everything he said he was going to do. He beat the shit out of Regis Progress like he said he was going to do. And so, man, shout out to Devin. You got to give him his props. Now in the press conference, of course, people are going to ask Devin about Javante Davis. That's a fight that people been wanting to see for years. Tank and Devin have been going back and forth at each other for years. I'm talking about... For more than five years, Tank and Devin been going back at each other, right? We didn't heard the sparring stories. I mean, these dudes, they got real beef. They don't like each other. And fans been going back and forth, arguing with each other who will win. And, you know, you got Javante Davis fans. They hate Devin. You got Devin fans. They hate Tank. And it's just a whole big thing that's been going on. And all of this talking, we want to see him get in the ring. So last night, you know, Devin was asked about Javante Davis. And this is what Devin Haney had to say. 
Tank don't want to fight because uh, if he really wanted to fight, then he would be trying to build up the fight instead of instead of trying to not you know knock it down or you know try to you know say oh I'm only selling because of this or because of that. If he really wanted to fight me, he would you know be making it that you know it's it's a big fight and you know it's the best fight for boxing. But you know he uh, he only talked talk down on the fight but like I said many times they say everything but let's fight nobody um has out did Devin um you know in terms of Tank's dance partners um you know you don't you don't have to down the other fighter to um to validate what you are and what you bring to the table uh Tank um and his team have consistently lied uh to the people they created this narrative that because you make money or because you charge the people some astronomical money for a fight that you know that the guy is going to lose because um, obviously the um, – what is it when the bet the betting line? The betting line doesn't even reflect um, as much money as the, that the guy is charging. So to, the message to all the fans, stop letting Tank and his team piss on your head and tell you it's rain with these, with these fights, these insignificant fights. You know what I mean? The saying is for the culture. Devin represents the culture and represents boxing and what boxing should be and what boxing is. So that was what Devin and Bill had to say. Now, I'm going to let y'all know how I feel about all this, but now I'm going to let y'all hear what Calvin Ford had to say, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to cook on all of this. He looked at real sharp. You know, um, I just sit there and say uh, Regis was another uh, roadie, but he had no footwork. Period. Roly, Roly had better footwork than him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but Devin, you know, he did his thing. He looked at marketable. You know, like I always sit there and say, that's why Devin Dag, he said, Calvin, stop. He put this bargaining chips together. But again, I, I want to make a challenge like, yo, if y'all cannot mention Tank name for any conversation for the whole year 2024, then y'all got my y'all got me. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to make a challenge like, yo, if y'all cannot mention Tank name for any conversation for the whole year 2024, then y'all got my y'all got me. You know what I'm saying? In the words of Floyd Mayweather, he didn't fight for the money. He wanted to fight. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is if you're trying to get the fight, you know, say, yo, send me an offer. Take the offer and get in the ring. Right, right. Um, I mean, that's, that's the quickest way I think the fight could happen because it's always dealing with the money situation. Now y'all heard from both sides. Now I'm going to keep it real with y'all because y'all done heard me say on several different occasions that I believe that Javante Davis has the upper edge on Devin Haney, right? I favor Tank to beat Devin. But all of that shit don't matter if they don't fight each other. It don't matter what I favor. It don't matter what you favor because they have to get in the ring and we have to see who wins that fight. And first, let me start off with what Devin and Bill had to say. First of all, I do agree with a lot of what Devin and Bill said, but what I don't agree with is you can't contradict yourself and talk about that Javante Davis and his team do a lot of lying. When Devin and Bill, y'all lie more than anybody in the sport of boxing. Let's just keep it a buck. And you also contradicting yourself when you say that you don't have to downgrade other fighters and other opponents and things like that to boost yourself up. Well, Devin, Bill Haney, y'all do that more than anybody. You did it with Shakur. Y'all do that with everybody. So I don't agree with them when they say that. Although I feel what they saying and I actually agree, but I don't agree with it coming out of their mouth because they being hypocritical when they do the same things all of the time. But as far as them saying that Tank don't want to fight and his team do everything to downplay the fight and downgrade the fight, it's true. They do. Because I let y'all hear what Calvin had to say. And Calvin had the nerve enough to let the words don't say Tank's name for all of 2024 and then you got my attention. And then Calvin directly goes into a speech talking about money and basically what he's saying is that Devin just needs to take whatever is given to him by Tank if he really want to make the fight happen. 
and everything is always on. Well, if they won't tank this, if they won't tank that. And like I said, I'm a tank fan and I'm not really a fan of Devin like that because I don't like all the lies that he tells. But I got to keep it a buck. This ain't about me being a fan of neither one of these fighters. This is about me sitting back, looking at the situation and being able to be real and truthful about the situation. What Devin and Bill is saying, it make a whole lot more sense because every time you hear Calvin Ford speak, and he is Javante Davis's coach, right? Um, I do believe he has a lot of influence on what goes on with Tank. He's always saying everything but let's make the fight happen. Why are you telling this man not to say Javante Davis's name for all of 2024? That's letting me know that y'all don't have no interest in the fight at all. Now, we do have a discrepancy, right? And what weight class they going to fight at because Tank fight at 135 and Devin, he just moved up to 140. And then Devin is making it look bad on himself because he's talking about that he looking to move up to 147. But all in all, right? Tank Davis is the money man. Tank is not fighting the competition that Devin is fighting. Let's just keep it a buck. See, don't nobody want to hold Tank's feet to the fire because people say, well, Tank don't have to do nothing. Tank can just do whatever he want to do. Tank is the A-side, man. When are we going to step back and just keep it real and be boxing fans and say, you know what? Tank do need to fight Shakur. Tank do need to fight Devin Haney because I'm going to tell y'all a million times. I'm not for crowning these fighters and giving them credit for things they haven't done. People running around and say, well, Tank beat everybody. Okay, get in the ring and prove that. That's all I'm saying. Because I can't fight for these guys. Y'all can't fight for them. And all of that, oh, man, he do this and he do that. It sounds good. But is he willing to get in the ring and prove that? And if your team is out here talking about, well, basically, you got to take low ball money if you want to make the fight happen. Like Isaac Pitbull Cruz and all these other dudes, y'all don't talk the same way when it comes to them. But when it comes to other fighters that's at the A level, it's always excuses not to make the fight. And I'm not saying this is coming for Javante Davis's mouth, but man, your team is speaking for you. Like, this shit got to stop. When are we going to say, okay, we sick of seeing him fight the Pitbull Cruises, the Rolando Romeros. Yeah, Ryan Garcia is a cool opponent, but you put a rehydration clause on him. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a fan of Tank. I think he a hell of a fighter, but when are we going to say, okay, yeah, we are fans of Tank, but we got to keep it real. This shit got to stop. Devin Haney, as far as his opposition in the ring, he doing more. You know what I'm saying? He's fighting Vasil Lomachenko, who Tank wouldn't fight for years. You know what I'm saying? He moved up and he fought the champion in Regis Pro Grey. And even though I don't think too highly of George Cambosis as a fighter, I think he like a C plus, B minus level fighter at best. But Devin still went over there to Australia and he became undisputed. Tank is the A-side. If he's the A-side, man, he got to get out here and he got to push forward. And if Devin don't really want to fight, well, he got to call Devin Bluff, man. All this talking back and forth, that don't mean shit. And a lot of y'all fans that's running around here just acting like crazy ass fanatics of a fighter that y'all like, y'all are the problem. Because y'all don't want to put your favorite fighter's feet to the fire and demand them to get in the ring and prove these things. You know what I'm saying, man? I I'm kind of sick of this shit. But anyway, y'all let me know how y'all feel about the situation. Drop a comment in the comment section. Make sure that y'all hit my like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already sub. And y'all already know how I do. There you go talking that boxing again. And I'm gone.